Welcome colleagues who are in the room uh, here at the IAS and welcome to those who are online. Um, my name is Marcia Meskim and I'm the director of the IAS and it's my absolute pleasure today to be introducing our residential fellow, Maria Olkova, who is here to, um, from Beketov um, University um, in Ukraine and is joining us with a, a most fascinating discussion, but also I have to say um, through a wonderful uh, program that we have managed to, to operate um, uh, this year, uh, the Ukraine Response Program, through which we have found some fantastic fantastic partnerships and Beketov is one of our key partners now and we're really looking forward to this being just the start of a much longer relationship through that process. So this is um, again something we're really really um, ha happy to be welcoming and thrilled to have you and you're speaking obviously of something which is of, of, of immense importance not only to Ukraine, not only to Europe, not only to the rest of the world but to the to the to the way in which we think seriously about how we make green transition not only making something come from something that is a, 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 a disaster, but the way in which we might also transition um, from more stable scenarios. So what you're speaking of is also something we really, really delighted to be hearing about, and we're hoping that we can in some way be part and parcel of that as it goes forward. I'm going to turn to my colleague, Azir, now, who will give a more formal introduction to this um, particular talk and to potentially form a work that's going to go forward through ABC. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Sorry for speaking to me. Speaking to me. Yeah. Uh, been, so I'm happy to introduce Maria Alcova. Maria Alcova is, first of all, maybe I should introduce myself. Yeah. I'm Asa Natapak. I'm a lecturer in urban planning and urban design at the School of Architectural Building and civil engineering here at Labra University. And I'm happy to introduce Maria Kova. She is an associate professor in transport systems at the Beketo. So she will talk today about post-war rebuilding of transport systems in Ukrainian cities. Um, and as Marsha mentioned, it's a part, this event was originally a part of a bigger initiative of training initiative between Lavra University and um, Ukrainian University. And I want to thank you, Steve Rothberg and Malcolm Goodman, for the rest of this amazing Ukrainian response group. Um, so we started work with Maria, um, on, um, on the project of rebuilding Ukrainian cities. Um, so maybe uh, I will finish with a kind of a personal note from me. I was born in Russia and I lived part of my early life. I uh, lived in Moscow. And um, I actually realized that this, this winning initiative uh, had a kind of um, great healing effect on me. It's helped me really well to stop being um, paralyzed and horrified by this war and actually doing something real, meeting people and contributing, and this has like a huge personal effect of me. So the stage is yours. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much for this warm growth. Thank you very much for this introduction. I'm very grateful to each of you for this huge, great support uh, you provided for each Ukrainian scientist, academic students. Uh, it's pleasure for me, it's honor for me to have this opportunity to present my university, to present my department, and even present the transport system in Ukraine. So uh, I'm going to present a little bit my university. Uh, I will going to present my department. Uh, we will talk a little bit about transport system of Ukraine at a glance and during the war. Uh, I will detail to give you some information about uh, city of Kharkiv and transport system, what happens in Kharkiv, uh, how this transport system works now, what is necessary to rebuild the transport system and who intends to help, namely Kharkiv, to rebuild water infrastructure. And of course, we have a future plans and there is some conclusions. So uh, this is my university. Uh, this is a unique university even for Ukraine. 
because they are training specialists in all municipal economy sphere. They study from building, infrastructure, energy, all, all the spheres that serve city, including transport. This is my university after Shelling, 23rd of June. Uh, it was shelled and uh, damaged uh, around area. And not only area, it was damaged all windows uh, that we saw here was a, bi a big uh, place. Uh, but fortunately, without any losses of our staff or people. Uh, we're not a unique university who has this like uh, damages, um, but uh, we are still continuous to work and uh, a lot of staff now works at university and a lot of students uh, of course removed them now. This is main division of our university how to present uh, for foreign uh, people because we have some more complex uh, division of our university, but on this end, we, ha we have like architecture, design, fine arts, civil engineering, economics management, etc. You can see, and my department, uh, my institute now, this is energy information and transport infrastructure. In this case, you can, you can see these differences be because uh, in uh, European country in UK transport is in civil engineering, but in our cases we have like uh, these uh, differences in comparison with the uh, all of these subjects, the topics that you can see here. This is the training or research by uh, my uh, institute, and this institute has a department. Department of Transport System and Logistics. And this is main topics about transport technology, transport system, uh, logistics, etc. It's all transport questions, uh, concentrated focus on this department. And this is my department, this is my colleagues. Uh, we have six full professors, we have 11 PhD associated professors, we have nine assistants. Uh, we have uh, our separate like website so where you can see much more about our uh, team. Uh, we prepare students, we train students, we have educational program in uh, bachelor, master and PhD. Uh, bachelor divided in transport technologies, uh, in management it's like separate logistics. Uh, and we have three directions in masters. This is transport system, uh, smart transport system and logistics for cities and uh, master in logistics. This is direction more management, not transport technology, but management. And we are prepared PhD in transport system. This is our students from uh, graduated from 2020. Uh, this is master students in smart transport and logistics for city. These new programs that was created together with Erasmus Plus capacity building project. And uh, this is new project. And this is new program educational. Uh, duration of this project, uh, of this program is uh, two years. It's education and scientific programs in our master's degree. Uh, study during two uh, years. Uh, what task uh, can be solved by our department? Uh, this is the main of them, this transfer system planning, traffic flow modeling, anti congestion activities, routing system simulation for city, parking system, road transport ergonomics, uh, influence drivers uh, and uh, uh, system, uh, and assessment of transport system efficiency. Uh, in this, uh, um, what I want to emphasize from this uh, information, we have um, this is our last project that we developed by our colleagues, by my department. Uh, the main uh, biggest one from this, this is the development of sustainable urban mobility plan of Kharkiv. It, this project started in 2020 and the uh, applicant for this for our department was Kharkiv City Council, EJZ company. This is Germany company, uh, consulting company. 
And uh, even this plan was finished according to the agreement, but voice started, and this is plan doesn't work, uh, doesn't work now. This is another city with another characteristic, etc. But we have a huge experience. We model this. Uh, uh, we model this transport uh, as model of Ukraine in using the Zoom application. Uh, also, it was a big survey on mobility and Kharkiv to implement the sustainability plan, multimodal transport macro model, uh, and uh, some uh, was uh, some experience with improving car parking system as a central part of Kharkiv. Uh, our like uh, projects uh, that we are um, this is another part of our activities yes not only training this is uh, like in all universities we are uh, focused on uh, research and development and uh, educational project that we are uh, implemented it was erasmus plus capacity building tool it was Erasmus like mobility project, small, and now we have a grant for Erasmus uh, Jean Monnet modules that we will implement it uh, starting from this uh, year, even from this month. Also, um, we uh, applied for European Institute uh, uh, Innovation Technology, like urban mobility, big uh, uh, project, and we uh, we are going to implement summer school together with this university. They applied for course like Horizon, but, but waiting for result. And uh, here uh, that I want to emphasize our um, strong collaboration with City Harkin Council. And this has given us really good opportunity to be involved in the city and to be really uh, do uh, work not only just for scientific paper, uh, real, real project. Uh, this is Ukraine. Um, this is uh, my country. And uh, Ukraine became very famous in the world due to this terrific invasion of other of, uh, countries that all people know around. Um, this um, after this, um, and people, Ukraine, uh, uh, people open Ukrainian now for the first time. Even our host, even from my friends, they just, a lot of like feedbacks that they do not anything about Ukraine. And uh, from one point, it's a uh, very bad like conditions by this reason and why we became so famous, but uh, uh, we understand that it's very important that from first weeks our politicians and our people starting to talk about rebuilding, about okay, I lost my house, but I have my life, I have this, uh, and we can rebuild. And this is a um, very significant understanding in our society that they really understand that infrastructure can be rebuilt very quickly. We just need to, to save our lives to save uh, this country. And this is like very important for, um, for our society and maybe this is like uh, what don't, give, don't allow us to give up. Uh, so uh, we can start to think about this transport system. This is huge. Uh, we have all transport modes in Ukraine. We have uh, ground transport, truck, road, rail, air transport. We have water transport, sea and river. And we get we have gas transition system, pipelines that maybe a lot of people know about this. Our strategic uh, potential and, and opportunities to supply ga gas to the Europe. If we will talk about transport system and the figures. Uh, I just want to show you uh, some figures about distance of rail transport. It's about two, two, uh, 20,000 kilometers. Uh, road transport about 186,000 kilometers distances. Uh, number of ports, this is we have sea, river, and air ports. It's about 26 of uh, sea ports river ports and 23 airports. This is like not so huge and not big amount. Uh, this is uh, because of we just not developed 
country, we are developing countries still and not, but this is for understanding this uh, size of our um, country. And uh, uh, you can see here just uh, structure and figures about distance of public transport. This is about trolley buses. We have about three, more than 3,000 uh, kilometers of trolley buses routes. So we have tram routes, we have metro uh, in three cities of Ukraine. And about coastline, it's very, uh, very key. United Kingdom is have a huge coastline, but Ukrainian in this comparison has this uh, uh, not so small. It's about more than uh, 2,070 uh, hundred uh, coastline with uh, waterways. And yes, we just have this unique geographical uh, position on the map, but this is maybe the, most, the main reason for this, the result that we have now, a big potential. Uh, transfer system uh, of Ukraine during the war. Uh, Plain Maria, from, if I will translate this Maria to English, it's like dream. Uh, the biggest plane in the world was damaged uh, in the first uh, the first months, I don't know, weeks, what this was, it was very close to this uh, Kiev, Gastom, this uh, uh, focus of this uh, uh, 19 airports damaged the 57 railway stations, uh, 23 and 8,000 of roads. You, you can see here a number of bridges, overpasses. You can see a number of railways, it's about 2,000 kilometers, and you can see about 1,020 1, kilometers, it's still temporarily occupied. Uh, four ports, this destroyed the post services, like yes, from the logistics point of view, from businesses, this is very important because it's difficult to calculate exactly, difficult to calcul calculate even these figures, but uh, post office, like several hundred posts, thousands of terminals, as well as large number of parcels, which operated are financially responsible. It's difficult really to give some figures, and these figures change. And uh, unfortunately, it's not perhaps the last figures. This is uh, the same uh, uh, figures, but more precisely for Ukrainian public transport. You can see number of trolley buses damaged, uh, trams, bus, cars, fire cars, and this is again our plane. And uh, if we will talk about uh, UNESCO, has confirmed that in the first three weeks of shelling, it's only for the first three weeks. It's like the data. 27 major historical buildings were damaged. Uh, yes, uh, and uh, it was Ukrainian. And now I want to focus on my city, on the city of Kharkiv. This is the second largest city and municipality in Ukraine. This population is about 1 million and four. And a couple of minutes, please, just to see this size, uh, small video for a couple of minutes. Yeah. Couple of minutes. Yeah. Okay. This is, uh, if I can, uh, what I saw in mass media, uh, the approximately 
population now in Kharkiv is about uh, 800 uh, people. It's about like decreasing twice. Uh, it, but it's not uh, precisely uh, figures is difficult to uh, calculate even from our uh, civil city council. This is our transport system of Kharkiv. This is, uh, we have underground. We are just underground metro, uh, about 38 kilometers of roads. We have tram, trolley buses. Uh, this is number of kilometers of routes. Uh, 200, more than 200 trolley buses. We have tram, just some pictures that want to show. Uh, it's about uh, 900 kilometers and bike, it's too small, but it's it was in the process of development. This is our bicycle infrastructure, it was a big project, etc. And uh, the total number of public stops is uh, about uh, 900, a little bit less, and total less of routes for Soviet people to move in, it's about 2,700. We have a lot of work. <laughs> uh, what is destroyed exactly in Kharkiv region till now? This is tram depots, all tram infrastructure was destroyed. 5,100 buildings were damaged, 30%. More than 100, 300 buildings were destroyed by direct hits of Russian cells and missiles. 900 of them were multi story buildings, and this has been this like age, 8, 12, 16 stages, floors. Uh, 35 destroyed um, uh, education institution and uh, 493 uh, damaged. This is nursery, kindergarten, university, college, etc. It's all together, and, it, and this is only half your region. Uh, 90 destroyed uh, hospitals, and you can see number of hospitals that damaged, even museum. And it was, yes, it was um, beyond the imagination when it destroyed some museum of our famous philosophy of Grigoris Kavarada, which situated far from Kharkiv, and this is like small village. And namely for this small museum with this philosophy, it's like it's beyond the uh, beyond the, the, the image. This is kindergarten, yes, in the form. Uh, underground in Park it saves a lot of lives. And uh, after three months, uh, the, our metro stations were closed, and people living in this uh, uh, area. And uh, they are living, they are walking, even uh, children started to study. Uh, and uh, after three months, they start and they make a decision of the city council to launch this uh, underground, except three stations in Saltika, that is the region that was damaged, and there is, was no technical possibilities to, to uh, provide this uh, transportation. Uh, why do we need rebuildings? Like it's understandable that we need rebuilding, but maybe uh, the first of all, this destruction of the city infrastructure, radical change in demographic in indicators. Just we don't know how many people uh, intend to live in Kharkiv, where to live, and this is big area of Kharkiv that damaged and should be rebuilt again. And of course, devastation of economics. This is uh, like uh, our life pictures of our very famous uh, square when we, all of us, uh, walked. And uh, Anastasia broke, has a university, used to walk and go through this square. Yes. Uh, how does uh, how transport system works now? What are our civil um, local authorities uh, trying to do? First of all, they try to they um, build a new shelter at stop. You can see in this one, and uh, in this winter period, it's starting to be like heating points uh, for people who can't who don't have a uh, heating now electricity they can go to this heating points and uh, to charge for his phone etc uh, 
but it's not uh, uh, it's about now it was uh, last that i met in the uh, last media it was 10 uh, shelters and there are going to be 23 of shelters in a different part of uh, uh, our city and of course the main uh, problem now for our municipality for infrastructure department and this is constant redistribution of passenger flow between the metro buses trams and trolley buses depending on the external factor because uh, electricity now they have to move from metro to organize some buses routes where the people can move etc this is like Constantly, you can when you go to the site, you say, "Oh, I'm sorry, today's uh, metro will not work," you know, something like this one. What is needed to rebuild transport system? Of course, this is needed infrastructure, and we that we have to conclude from different mass media. This is very important to uh, rebuild infrastructure out of city to connect city between each of them. Uh, to launch moving of people, moving of goods. And uh, the main topic and very crucial, this is city infrastructure and more complex to rebuild city infrastructure and to allow people to live in their city. For this, we need funding, of course. And um, it's not a, only one question. We don't need to forget that we don't not only need funding we need the people we need the experts who are really can solve and who could provide uh rebuilding process effectively based on uh, this uh, uh, sustainable principles etc and in this case we don't we don't have to forget about external experts and our internal experts our ukrainian expert like uh, collaborations uh, together will give uh, only uh, uh, maximum results. And of course, all of this has to be uh, rebuilt using sustainable development principles that, yes, we have like, it was backlog, it was like our disadvantages. We have a gap with this really, but now we have a chance to, to do it uh, in another way. When I try to find some information according to uh, intention uh, to who wants to rebuild, uh, who intend to rebuild Kharkiv, uh, namely transport infrastructure, it was difficult to find. Uh, but a lot of like uh, uh, some information about the intent to rebuild. But more precisely, we can find information about who namely signed agreement with Kharkiv. This is Turkey, this is Poland, Taiwan, Slovenia, and the European Investment Bank who really gives and like uh, um, are going to rebuild tram infrastructure, namely tram infrastructure in our city. And uh, there is information about USA, about United Kingdom, about this intention, and what's talking about United Kingdom is very interesting. And the last information that I found, it uh, uh, was signed transport partnership to rebuild water infrastructure. And this is information from, from not Ukrainian uh, mass media, this is from official uh, government of uh, UK. And even this you can find just like link, please, if you are interested to join to rebuild Ukrainian uh, cities, you can apply, you can register your uh, enterprise and then it will this process will continue and to offer. But this is more concentrated in this allowance uh, on uh, critical infrastructure like ports, uh, runways, uh, and uh, this is strategic infrastructure in Ukraine. But this, from something we have to start. We have future plans and we have a very determined uh, mayor of Kharkiv. Uh, I just want to uh, read this, his, uh, to cite him. Uh, we will not restore the architecture of Stalin's time. It's out of the question. We must rapidly turn this page and look 30, 50, and even 100 years ahead. Let's create new architectural assembles. This doesn't mean that we should ab abandon of our decade of architectural traditions. Today, the philosophy of architecture is completely different, and we have a unique chance to implement it. 
This is building that was uh, built uh, and uh, the architecture of this building, Nikolai Bukhetov. This is named after our university, named after. This is famous Ukrainian architecture who built a lot of buildings. Uh, in uh, namely in Kharkiv, he lived in Kharkiv, and we have we have some uh, discussion in society and professional architecture. Uh, they afraid of that it will be for, for, forgotten. That now will come new architectures, new uh, people with new. They like they don't know for, for about Kharkiv nothing. They just look on their uh, will write something beautiful. But they are really afraid of this, and this is like uh, our statement from mayor that uh, please don't worry, we will try to save this is our architecture and to rebuild it uh, using this approach just to save and uh, to continue. This is our history, and this is like uh, uh, we have to have this heritage and save this. Uh, also, uh, what uh, about the the more uh, a little bit detailed about this intention. This street I intended districts of the city means I intended to be divided according to, to landscape features and the mentally of residents. Like they want to um, reconsider districts that we have in Kharkiv because of uh, the needs of uh, people who live there. At the same time, they will not necessary to expand the city limits. Of course, in this case, with uh, losing of uh, populations, new ones will be built for those who lost their homes due to the war. Uh, next plan, according to the transport, uh, it's like just very difficult to find some information and to be uh, what uh, they are going to do. But this, like on this, uh, after six months of the war, they're trying to. Um, give us some detailed information. The city plans to create safe green areas, which with the variety of architecture, low rise building, uh, where there will be maximum of five floors, a green frame connecting rivers, equipped bike and pedestrian paths, and change of transport system. And this is for us, like for the transport department, change transport system very like, attractive. We want to see through this and um, a little bit of information uh, again from our city council that they specially plan to create a new transport framework uh, by changing the radial ring system. We have a ring system in Kharkiv and uh, that has outgrown itself. To ensure that communication between the new districts possibly will have to tunnel our buses and other buildings. This is like very, uh, very uh, significant changes uh, that they announced. Uh, and this, when I prepared this presentation, I found information that it will be presented tomorrow, master plan <laughs> for our kids. <laughs> And the creation of this master plan for Kharkiv will be uh, in, uh, in uh, was created by specialist of UK, famous uh, Norman Foster Architectural Bureau. And even they give us a link that we can join to this twenty uh, second. And this is Ukrainian time. In UK, it will be at one pm. Uh, and this is like very interesting what it will be presented. Uh, because uh, from this point uh, depends a lot of, and maybe will give us a lot of discussions, some agion, etc. Uh, to conclude this um, um, this presentation, this rebuilding. So first of all, I want to emphasize this need to update the infrastructure. Of course, we need funding when we need experts for this. Uh, the second one, this is security risk of infrastructure destruction uh, have to be taken into consideration as a result of possible swall during the design and reconstruction projects. It's important uh, to, um, to consider, to take into consideration this possible risk of repeating the same Maybe I don't know when it will stop, but uh, we understand according to our geographical position, according to what happened in the world, 
maybe it will be repeated and uh, there is some possibilities to rebuild transport infrastructures that will include some safety security principles like when we uh, uh, talking about buildings in ukraine they all uh, said that it has to be uh it must be shelter shelter in this building like maybe in this case with transport the same like in israel this example where they this population like this uh, used to be under shelter okay it will be like acid attack we will uh we will shelter etc another third point very important for ukraine in general not only for parking this is vehicle and transport infrastructure adapted to the needs of persons with disability and people with reduced mobility there is understanding that it will be a lot of people with few opportunities with disability after the war and uh, our infrastructure wasn't prepared for them and now it must be prepared for them because it will be a lot of people who will uh, have this different disability and different ages different um, mobility uh, possibilities and uh, this is very important uh, the third one is priority of assignment. Uh, priority of prioritization is very, very important to, we know that all we have to rebuild. This is like uh, something when gives for PhD students and you will choose what subject you will do. And this is a lot of that we can do, but uh, it's very important to do right prioritization of this project. And uh, don't lose this uh, in the first stage. And there is understanding that it's very easy to plan, but not easy, but it's difficult to plan rebuilding. But it's much more difficult to implement this plan. And this is the implementation will be for a long time. It's not short term projects. This is all the projects for long term. And uh, what I'm sure definitely is that uh, uh, people uh, in Ukraine, majority of them, they sure that we are, will become better than we were. And uh, this is like uh, the totally uh, definite in it. And even from this point, we have 30 children were born in Kharkiv last week, and we have 1,020 children that have been born in Kharkiv since the beginning of the war. So this is uh, the most impressive uh, like figures for me that life is continuous and we have to do something. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm open for the question.